headquarters of the WCES, also known as the Wildlife Conservation Society. And we have field scientists and new guards that work in the field to protect animals all across the globe. As we approach our Asian destination, I will need your guys' help. Scientists and zookeepers need good observation skills to ensure the animals' health and their behavioral patterns. So point out what you see, make some observations in and, and as well. And we have now arrived 7,000 miles to beautiful Asia. This area here is called the Kaha Meadow, home to a variety of different deer-like species. Now most are going to be in the back of the enclosure right now, waiting for their dinner from the zookeepers on the far left. We'll be over there in about eight minutes when we get to the back side of the Kaha Meadow, but we have the bears. I'm part of the Wild Asian Keeper Team. We call this area Kanha Meadow, where we care for about 40 Barasinga deer, 15 Axis deer, 10 Black Buck, and a pair of Munchak. We start Elephants do not like chili and leave the farms alone, allowing the farmer and the animals to share the habitat peacefully. We all know that an animal that is extinct, that means they no longer exist. Like dinosaurs and dodo birds, but the animal you'll see here was on the verge of extinction and can now only be found in North American and Asian zoos. And they were known as the Mongolian wild horses. Now they do look like donkeys and or domesticated horses, but they have very different features to them. They have shorter legs, stockier muscles. In 1902, there was less than 300 of these horses around the world. The BBC just took a few of them in, though, here at the Bronx Zoo, where we initiated a video. Oh, Oh, I see so I see her right now. We're just going to move up and then slow down so we can get a really long and good look at her. Because she's going to be hanging out right over here by these bushes. So well as a Malay tiger, she's 350 pounds, as well as 5 years old and about 7 feet in length. She's a big cat. We're going to get a great look at her in a moment. The tiger shirts are really beautiful. Not only are they great for camouflage, but they also zookeepers and field scientists identify which one is one in the wild. The tiger stripes are really interesting though, because then no tiger stripes are ever the same. They're always going to be different. It enables researchers who are studying them to track them in the field to see their hunting and behavior patterns so that we can learn more about them and their wild environment. Tigers are also very solitary, so the times you'll see them with another companion is if they're fighting over territory, breeding, or if the mother is raising young, and that can last for a few years. But they're also very, they're very strong and fast, because they will sprout the tigers in Indonesia. Hi, my name is Faru Alama. I'm helping the rangers of the National Park in doing their forest patrol. There was a time when we found some tiger's footprints in the jungle. But then we also found that some snares are inside, inside the forest, which become threats to the animal. We dismantle the snares to make sure that the tiger are safe. You'll see the backside of the Kaha Meadow with some of our beautiful deer hanging out. As well as some of the black book antelopes. They've actually had some babies born recently, so you might see some little guys pointing around the herd. Now the males are much darker in appearance while the females are much later, but we have a juvenile which has a light coat like the females, but has antlers like the males. That's going to be a male who's going to be eventually growing that darker coat as the season grows. Now when you look at them, they're once again 10,000 pounds fully grown. And they'll eat up to 200 pounds of hay a day and drink up to nearly 60 gallons of water. And their trunk can hold up to 2 gallons of water. And 40,000 muscles reside in that trunk of theirs, which they'll use to pick up objects from the ground below. As well as that thumb-like finger at the bottom. Like grass to throw under their back, to throw in their mouth, or hay. Dirt to throw all over their back. As well as to, re as well as to rip off branches off the trees with enormous force while they'll eat leaves. Now the reason why she has thrown dirt on her back is to cool herself off. Elephants lack foot glands. So they use the dirt as a natural sunscreen to protect themselves from the sun's rays. So I think we'll get some dirt a bit now by bugs. Here's one of our field scientists worth protecting creatures in the wild. WCS works in the field with both African and Asian elephants. Here's a note from our field scientists who work with Asian elephants. My name is Donnie Gunaryadi. And I'm the elephant. Even though rats and insects cause more damage to crops than elephants, because the elephant is so huge, psychologically, it seems more threatening. So when there is conflict, the farmers poison the elephants. In response, we created a crop protection unit to mitigate conflict and send the elephants back into the park. And it's been a huge success. Since we started in 2003, no elephants and no people have been killed. 3,500 pounds and almost 32 years old. Hanging out right here is our Indian rhinoceros named Kali. 
Now when you look at Kelly's skin, you might think it looks like armor. That is actually sensitive layers of fat. So sensitive, they will use the mud as a natural sunscreen to protect themselves from the sun tropical rays so that they don't get sunburned or bitten up by bugs. Now if you've seen the show The Zoo, you probably already know another rhino named Penny, where zookeepers will put sunscreen all over her face. But unlike the black and white rhino of Africa where they have two horns, the Indian rhino, he's the Zambardier. Zambardier can stand to about 5 feet tall on the shoulder and weigh as much as 650 pounds. Their antlers can grow to nearly 3 feet in length with 3 pines on each bar. In the wild, the males prefer to live alone while females like to live in small social groups. At the Bronx Zoo, they're always hanging out amongst different deer species, antelope, and each other, so they do enjoy each other's company. The hog beard is his name for a short and heavy-like belt that resembles that of a hog, and they're located in areas of northern Pakistan and in parts of India. You'll see them all working to come home, and underneath are elevated tracks and highways. It's a natural ecosystem home to a variety of different animals, like fish, turtles, ducks, and migratory birds. Look down below us, you might see some of these animals swimming around right now. Over here, you're going to see a variety of animals that come from all across the continent of Asia. Some come from, actually no, I'm sorry, you're going to look for two animals that are in southern to the parts of the Himalayan mountains in Nepal. No, no, the Himalayan tar and Macau. And our mission protect them in over 300 sites and in 50 countries worldwide. And that's a great step in the right direction. We're just going to move slowly and then we're going to stop in a moment to allow the train in front of us to disembark the platform. And then we'll let you guys get off and you guys can enjoy the rest of your day. If you'd like to hop out the WCS's wildlife missions, you definitely can. We have two campaigns going.